Hey everyone, today we're going to be comparing the Sony a7 III versus the Sony a7 IV. So today I want to answer a few questions that might be on your mind, such as if you're an a7 III user like me, should you upgrade to the a7 IV? Does the a7 IV have the features you need as a photographer or videographer? Or is the a7 III enough? So as usual, we're going to be doing an out in the field comparison, testing out a bunch of things of these two cameras to hopefully answer all your questions. So to start off with, I want to talk about the camera bodies themselves. In terms of how they feel in your hands, the a7 IV has a slightly longer grip, so it feels a lot more comfortable to hold this camera body compared to the a7 III, where my fingers kind of jam up into the camera body at the front of the camera. Both these camera bodies use the same battery and they both have dual card slots as well. The Sony a7 III has one UHS-1 slot and one UHS-2 slot. The Sony a7 IV has dual UHS-2 slots and a CF Express Type A slot as well. We have a new mode dial on the floor. It's a dual layered mode dial. The top dial, you can switch between all your modes and the bottom dial has a lock button so you can quickly switch between photo, video and SNQ mode. I personally like this better than the a7 III that only has one dial and it does take a few clicks to switch between photo and video. Something I'm really, really excited for is that they've switched the exposure compensation dial to just an endless infinity dial instead with a little lock button. So you can customize that to whatever you want. I currently have a set to a white balance shortcut. They also swap the C1 and record button, but you can customize them back the other way around if you prefer. And we have a grippier joystick, which I love, and you can find the same joystick on the a7S III and the a7R4. Now about the screen, I personally prefer the tilt screen of the a7S III when it comes to portrait photography rather than the flippy screen we have on the a7IV. We are, of course, going to start off with an autofocus test. We're going to see how well the IAF works on both cameras. I also have them set up exactly the same. So for this test, I've decided to use the AF tracking sensitivity on 5, which is responsive. I also have them both set to continuous autofocus, IAF switched on, and a wide focus area. We're going to check out Still's autofocus first and we'll take a look at video AF and video features a little later on. One of the big differences in autofocus between the a7IV and the a7III is that in the a7IV we now have human, animal and bird IAF in both photo and video. On the a7III we only have human and animal IAF in Still's mode. So having the a7 IV can be handy if you're a photographer who captures a wide variety of subjects and also likes to shoot in photo and video. You can see some examples of the animal and bird IAF in my a7 IV review video, by the way, which I will leave linked down below. We also have subject tracking on the a7 IV as well, which I first started using on the a7C, so I'm glad to have this feature in the a7 IV as well. The Sony a7 IV has 759 phase detection AF points compared to the a7 III, which has 693 phase detection AF points. While filming these IAF videos, we also did an autofocus accuracy test on both cameras by taking three sets of 20 photos while I was walking towards and away from the camera. With the AF tracking sensitivity set to locked on, I got 48 out of 60 photos with critical focus on the a7 III and 52 of 60 on the a7 IV. With AF tracking sensitivity set to responsive, I got 49 of 60 with the a7 III and 57 of 60 with the a7 IV. So the a7 IV in a practical setting from my experience has improved autofocus accuracy and performance. However, something I did want to talk about is that while these are great features to have if you have the means of upgrading your camera body for your work, it is by no means necessary. I've been using the a7 III full time for three years now. I've captured weddings, fashion shoots, portraits, travel, landscape photography, and I was even vlogging on this camera body. And I had no issues using the a7 III to create professional work that my clients are happy with. Before we take a look at photo comparisons in Lightroom, I want to say a big thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Canva. If you need a logo for your photography business or a way to create business cards, mood boards and price lists, Canva has so many tools that are super quick and easy to use. With Canva Pro, I've recently started using the content calendar to help plan out my social media posts. You can use templates to create one post for multiple platforms by using the magic resize button, then heading 
heading to the content planner to schedule posts on different platforms. If you want to try out Canva and unlock everything Pro has to offer, you can get a free 45 day extended trial of Canva Pro by clicking on the link in my description. Next, I want to check out the difference in image quality and image resolution because in the a7 IV, we have 33 megapixels and in the a7 III, we have 24 megapixels. So for this test, I'm going to take a photo of this landscape here because we've got a lot of dynamic range on a tripod to make sure they're both framed exactly the same with the GM35 1.4 as always. And now I will switch over the camera bodies. So here are the two photos that I took. As you can see, I underexposed both shots with the same settings. We have the a7 III on the left and the a7 IV on the right. So I wanna start off to see the dynamic range difference between both cameras. So I'm gonna bring up the shadows to plus 100 on the a7 III and plus 100 on the a7 IV. I feel like both files look pretty similar when you're looking at them zoomed out, but I did notice that when you zoom in, especially in this top right-hand corner here, the a7 IV file looks a lot brighter and you can see some more detail in these darker parts of the tree trunks. I also feel like you can see like there's more clarity in the a7 IV file as well if I kind of bring this section closer together so you can glance at it. You can also see the slight difference in brightness here in the top left hand corner, especially you can see it on this tree trunk here compared to the a7 IV which is a bit brighter and the leaves in the tree here as well. It looks brighter in the a7 IV file. I also want to check out the highlights recovery so I'm going to put them to minus 100 for both and just zoom into the clouds here. I'll bring that closer together so we can easily compare. I feel like the highlight recovery is pretty similar on both cameras, but here you can really see the color difference, especially in the blue part of the sky. The a7 III has a more purple blue kind of look to it, and the a7 IV has a warmer and a more green look to it as well. And we have the exact same white balance and tint for both cameras. Next up, I took this portrait of Chloe again on the GM35 for both photos. So let's zoom into the a7 III and we'll zoom into the a7 IV here. You can again see that color difference when it's straight out of the camera with the same white balance and tint. I'm going to bring the photos a little bit closer together and I'm going to crop the image right here at her hairline. So you can see the difference in image resolution when it comes to taking portraits. So you can see we've just got a lot more of her face in the frame with the a7 IV file, even though I was standing in the same spot with the same lens for both cameras. I'm going to give both photos a little bit of a HDR look just so we can see the details in the shadows because it was a bit overcast. And I'm also going to change the temperature and tint of the a7 IV file to match the a7 III. So now that we can see a little bit more details here in the shadow parts, something that I've noticed between both cameras is that while I love what the a7 III files look like, there is something really nice about the a7 IV files. I love just the clarity and detail that you can see, especially when you're taking portraits. You can just see the difference in skin texture between both these files when you have them side by side. So I'll just try and put that section closer together so you can see. Yeah, I just love all that detail that you can see on the face. Let's take a look at video. Right away, you can see the autofocus in video mode on the a7 IV is much snappier and faster than the a7 III. The a7 IV also has the additional feature of having IAF in video mode for humans, animals, and birds, which is really helping here. There are a few other noticeable differences in video that I am really enjoying with the a7 IV. The a7 III uses 4208 bit, while the a7 IV uses 4220 10-bit, which means you'll have more data in your video files. You can film in 4K, 25 or 30p with the a7 III and a7 IV, but also 4K, 50 or 60p with an S35 crop in the a7 IV. The a7 IV has improved steady shot with the addition of active steady shot. There is a new focus breathing compensation feature with a slight crop and the addition of the Cinetone picture profile. All these clips with the a7 III are shot in standard and the a7 IV in Cinetone. One last thing about file formats, on top of the XAVC-S format of the a7 III, we now also have the addition of XAVC-SI and XAVC-HS, so you do have more file size and quality options for video. Moving into our low light test, you can really see the difference in colors here. It's nice having the option of filming in Cinetone on the a7 IV for more subtle colors if you don't want the extra work of filming in S-Log3 and color grading it in post. 
Again, the autofocus of the a7 IV is much faster and stays sticky on the subject compared to the a7 III. I would say that if you are a video heavy user, there are enough upgrades and new video features in the a7 IV to make it a worthy replacement for the a7 III. For the low light photo comparison, I decided to resize the a7 IV files to be the same as the a7 III. I found that they both look the same at pretty much all the ISOs for photo which is a good thing for both cameras and keeping in mind that the a7 IV does have larger files. I also unfortunately had my shutter speed one click faster for the a7 IV which is why those files look a little darker compared to the a7 III, I'm sorry. But if you keep an eye on the black photo frame in the background as well as Dan's face, it's a good way to compare the noise levels of both cameras. I find both the a7 III and IV are easily usable up to ISO 8000 and still look fine up until ISO 12800. From ISO 20000 and onwards, the a7 IV noise actually looks rougher compared to the a7 III even when the file is sized down to match in size. My final thoughts are that if you are after a well-rounded hybrid camera for both photo and video, the a7 IV is a great way to go because of all the new video features they've added. Having more video features is one of the reasons I decided to upgrade. In terms of photography only, I think both the a7 III and the a7 IV are great and capable cameras. The main reasons I wanted to switch to the a7 IV for photography is for having improved human IAF and subject tracking as I use that every day for my professional work. I also wanted animal and bird IAF as I do use that a lot when I'm doing lens reviews and for my own personal photography. I also really like the new 33 megapixel sensor. It's great for seeing more details and also gives me a little bit of wiggle room when it comes to cropping. And the colors straight out of the camera are really beautiful and makes for a great base when it comes to editing. So I'd love to know what you think of both the cameras in the comments. Is there a particular reason you're switching or maybe a reason you wanna stick with the a7 III? But as always, thank you so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I will see you all next time. Bye.